everyone, I am Alexa Dunn and today I am going to be talking about Kara Thomas. She is my favorite YA thriller author and actually published three books under the name Kara Taylor before her Kara Thomas books came out. So I thought it would be good to do kind of a Kara Thomas retrospective Rex video. People ask me all the time for YA thriller Rex and specifically I like wrecking Kara Thomas but not every Kara Thomas book is for every reader. So I am going to go over each of her pen name identities and kind of the nuances and differences and go over my thoughts on each of her books and why you may or may not want to pick them up. Generally, Kara is an auto buy for me, so I get all of her books and I enjoy all of them in one way or another. Her style and sensibility really works for me as a reader. I would liken Kara Thomas to the Gillian Flynn of YA. That's definitely how I would describe her Kara Thomas pen name, though her Kara Taylor books I would describe a little differently, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But if you are looking for kind of gritty psychological thrillers in the YA space, I don't think anyone's doing them better than Kara Thomas right now. So, so far Kara Thomas has six books and I'm eagerly awaiting finding out what her seventh is gonna be. I am begging you publishing, publish more Kara Thomas books. Like I want a seventh book, I want an eighth book, a ninth book. I can't get enough of them. But she has six books out currently. As Kara Taylor, she published the Prep School Confidential series with St. Martin's. Prep School Confidential was kind of like a gossip girl with murder. <laughs> So this is the stylistic difference between Kara's author identities and pen names. Prep School Confidential, first of all, all three books are related. Prep School Confidential takes place at an elite New England boarding school after the main character, Anne Dowling, kind of accidentally burns down the school theater, whoops, accidental arson, and is expelled from her New York school. So her father finds her a spot at Wheatley Academy. Shortly after arriving, Anne's roommate is murdered, as, as happens in YA thrillers. And so the first book is Anne solving her roommate's murder. Then the second book is about a disappearance of a student that happened 30 years ago and Anne solving that. And then the third one is about the disappearance of a teacher. So each of the books connect together and you do kind of have to read all of them to get them. Though I'd say there's enough of a recap of book one in book two that you might be able to read it separately, but I advise reading them in order personally. Prep School Confidential is really kind of indicative of the kind of sweet spot, younger-ish YA, kind of pulpy YA. That was definitely in fashion when the series started publishing in 2013. The reason I know that Kara Thomas used to be Kara Taylor, in fact, is that when Prep School Confidential came out, it really appealed to me and I put it on my TBR and it's one of those that just sat on my TBR and I never read. And next thing I know, there's this new YA thriller author, Kara Thomas, and she looks just like Kara Taylor, so I put it together. Um, but I basically read her books out of order. So let me tell you what order I read them in. First, I read Little Monsters because it had really great buzz when it came out. Then I read The Cheerleaders because I was super excited for it and I got an arc. And I was super excited about it because uh, Kara did a really fantastic interview on First Draft Podcast. She actually has two, one from earlier when her earlier series came out and one from when the Little Monsters was coming out and she was talking about The Cheerleaders, her next book. Both really good po podcasts to listen to as an aspiring writer. I took a lot of really good career advice from those interviews. So that's Prep School Confidential, the series. It's the adventures of Anne Dowling, this elite New Yorker. She kind of has like that rich bitch vibe, but she's like a rich bitch with a heart of gold. They are pulpy. So the Prep School Confidential series is only going to really work for you if you like pulpier fiction, so to speak, like the Pretty Little Liars and Gossip Girls of the world. It is very satisfying if you like those kinds of reads. Though I will say, I loved Prep School Confidential and Wicked Little Secrets. Those are the first two. I gave both of them five stars. The third one, Deadly Little Sins, was more of a four star read for me. I felt that the first two just were a little bit more satisfying with the with the mysteries. I thought they had really good kind of motives and red herrings and endings. The one thing I don't love as much about the series as a whole, though it really only comes up in the first two books, but I want to offer this as a warning to readers. It does have a bog standard YA love triangle 
And it's one of those love triangles where I was just so firmly rooting for one of the legs of the triangle that all of the stuff with the other leg really annoyed me. Now the other leg was really useful to the development of the mystery and as a writer I'm like yeah I don't think she could have done it any other way. Um, to me it's not like an inherent flaw in the book. It is a personal thing where I just really didn't like um, Anthony. If you read the book uh, Anthony is one love interest and the other love interest is Brent. Though gosh that posh kind of prep school name really bugged me. I was like everyone has pretty obnoxious names but that's part of the genre. Um, but I was like Team Brent all the way the whole time. So that's just something to kind of be aware of. But that said, Anne and Brent were like super swoony and great. So it does have a satisfying pulpy romance like murder plot line. I loved the setting. And what was most fascinating to me, because I am a huge Kara Thomas fan having read these three books, to see the evolution of Kara Thomas as a writer. This could be just a really interesting experiment if you are watching this as an aspiring writer and you wanna see the evolution. Prep School Confidential, I'm like, yeah, this was her first book. Wicked Little Secrets, I'm like, I see a bit of the progression here. Then Deadly Little Sins, even though I didn't love it quite as much as the other two, it was four stars for me instead of five. I saw Kara Thomas in that book, I was like, oh, it's like watching a butterfly like it's a caterpillar in a cocoon and it's gonna blossom into a beautiful butterfly because reading that book I was like I know that the darkest corners is next and I loved the darkest corners and I just loved seeing the evolution of her as a thriller writer so now let's get into Kara Thomas I will start with the darkest corners since it was her first book as Kara Thomas so The Darkest Corners is about Tessa, who is from Florida. She lives with her grandmother and she returns home to her hometown in Pennsylvania because her father, who is in jail, is very sick and is going to die. So it's one of those, I have to go home and there are dark secrets in my past books. And indeed, when Tessa and her best friend Callie were eight years old, they were key witnesses to the disappearance and murder of Callie's cousin. They gave key testimony uh, at the trial that convicted a local serial killer of her murder. But Tessa has always felt very unsettled because she's not 100% sure that they told the truth and the right person is in jail. Indeed, after everything went down and Tessa had to go move to live with her grandmother after her mother, who had lots of like alcohol problems, took off. Tessa and Callie grew apart. Callie started ghosting her and Tessa is not sure why. So when she ends up back in her hometown, she's staying with Callie's family because her mom still really loves Tessa. Lots of conflict and drama because Tessa and Callie don't like each other anymore and they have to kind of rebuild their friendship when another girl turns up dead and it has the MO of the serial killer who allegedly is in jail because they put him away. And so it kind of blows wide open the secrets from 10 years ago. And it's Tessa basically on the hunt to figure out who really killed Callie's cousin and unravel the lies that they told. I really liked The Darkest Corners, even though it was the last Kara Thomas book I read in order. Um, I thought it was a brilliantly kind of plotted and layered thriller. It has the bones and skeleton of an adult thriller. I can see the inspiration and I'm a huge adult thriller reader. So it was just for me an incredibly satisfying YA thriller because it meshed the tropes and DNA of an adult thriller with YA um, characters and tropes as well. A really satisfying read. So I would recommend The Darkest Corners to you if you like grittier kind of small town with secrets kinds of thrillers. It is perfect for that. The next Kara Thomas book is Little Monsters. This is about Casey who moves to live with her estranged father and his new family and basically is the new girl in town. She becomes quick friends with Jade and Bailey, but as fast as they become friends, they start acting distant and then Bailey goes missing. This is essentially a murder thriller about toxic friendships and secrets in small towns. There's also some sizzling chemistry between Casey and her stepbrother, and if you've watched my Trash Tropes video, you know I'm here for that. And it's one of the great layers of kind of the thriller aspect of this book. 
This book, I would say, really stands apart from all of Kara Thomas's book. It breaks the formula the most in that it is hyper-focusing just on the teenage toxic relationships. Her other books have a lot of interaction between kind of adults in the community and the secrets that adults keep and how they impact the young people in the story. So they're all far more, they feel like crossovers between adult thrillers and YA. I'd say Little Monsters is a fascinating psychological portrait of kind of what it feels like to be a teenage girl in a toxic friendship circle with secrets. So I recommend it if that sounds up your alley. And lastly, Kara Thomas's most recent book is The Cheerleaders. The Cheerleaders is about Monica. She lives in her small town, she's on the dance squad, and her unfortunate claim to fame is that five years ago, her sister was the last cheerleader to die tragically in a series of bizarre deaths. Her sister committed suicide after two of her friends on the squad were killed in a horrific car accident and another two were murdered in one of their homes. Five years later, there's a memorial being planned to remember them on the five-year anniversary, and Monica discovers some disturbing letters in her stepfather's possession, an old cell phone that belonged to her sister, and she starts to suspect that things are not as they seemed. It never made sense to Monica that her sister would kill herself, and so she launches an investigation to find out what really happened. The Cheerleaders, I feel, is probably the most pure YA, even though it does have some adult thriller crossover aspects. It reminded me of, like, modern grown-up Fear Street, because Fear Street used to have uh, a sub-series where, like, terrible things happened to cheerleaders, usually involving, like, there were, like, demon possessions and stuff. But I loved those books when I was younger, so I loved that feel of the cheerleaders. The the idea, again, it's, it's a small-ish town where a lot of people are keeping secrets, but it focuses on the microcosm of the cheerleading squad and now Monica being on the dance squad. I know there were mixed reviews on the cheerleaders in terms of the resolution, but it was a five-star read for me. I really loved the reading experience. I do have small quibbles with the ending, but they weren't enough to upset the reading experience for me. It kept me guessing and had a lot of red herrings, and I was really invested in the characters. I'd say The Cheerleaders is pretty good if you want like a combo. It's a straight, gritty-ish YA thriller, but it's got a bit of pulp to it. So if that sounds appealing to you, you might like The Cheerleaders. And important to note, I should talk about romance. So the level of romance you want in your YA thriller might impact which Kara Thomas slash Taylor books you want to read. As I mentioned, if you like soap opera pulp and romance in a love triangle, you want to look to the Prep School Confidential series. The next Kara Thomas book that has the most romance is going to be Little Monsters because it does have that building tension between Casey and her stepbrother. And then The Darkest Corners and The Cheerleaders are going to have the least romance. There's some romance subplot to both of them, but it's pretty minimal. And that's actually something that might make these better reads for some people because I know that there are readers who are always looking for YA that is focusing a bit less on romance. So these two are really good choices if that sounds appealing to you. So that is my overview of Kara Thomas books, kind of what each of the books is about and why it might work for you as a reader if any of the elements that I described sound appealing. Overall, I just love Kara Thomas's writing and it definitely has evolved and become more sophisticated with each and every book. I find that her characters, I really feel like I know them, even when they're completely different from me and not someone I can directly relate to, there's enough kind of layers of thought process, personality, conflicts that I feel like I know their life and I care about them and generally I find that she writes very competent detective characters, main characters who are investigating mysteries. Now in Prep School Confidential it like verged on the edge of ridiculous because her main character Anne is so good at investigation where you're like, man, are, are you a detective? Are you a literal detective? But that series is more soap opera-y, so it totally works. But in these three, you know, the characters feel like teenagers. They make the requisite mistakes you would expect from a teen investigating, but they're still pretty good at it. Something that can definitely happen in YA thrillers is what I call stupid heroine syndrome. I mean, this can happen in any book, but generally I find that there are no stupid heroines in Kara Thomas books. They tend not to make 
huge logical missteps that make me want to throw the book across the room. I'm with the main characters for the journey. I enjoy the unfolding of the mystery. There's very rarely kind of clues, obvious big clues that the character overlooks because it's convenient to the plot. That's another thing that I find happens in a lot of YA thrillers. So I find that kind of the logical mystery progression in the books is very satisfying. I like the characters. I like those progressions. I am left guessing and sometimes I get pretty close to the twist or the ending but never 100% and that's what I like. The books can surprise me just a little bit. So that is my soapbox on Kara Thomas. If you like thrillers at all I honestly think she's a must read uh, in the YA thriller space. She's one of the best at it in the game right now. Um, I love her books. I really want her to write more. Delacourt, buy more books from Kara Thomas. Yes, all three of these are with Delacourt, uh, which is a Im imprint of Penguin Random House. Um, I want more Kara Thomas books. I just, I want them now. Um, and honestly, I would love it if publishing would just publish a ton of YA thrillers that are similar to Kara Thomas. Like, don't take, don't take her space, but write similar books that give me the same feelings. Because the thing with thrillers is I can read them obsessively. They're so easy to read. So Kara Thomas is one of my favorites. Uh, and I hope this video helped you figure out which Kara Thomas book is right for you. Or all of them, because they're all really good. So... Let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions about Kara's books or other YA thriller recommendations. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I will do more bookish rec type videos. I can take other authors where I've read their whole catalog and kind of break down their books for you. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I post new videos two to three times a week. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy reading.